Hello everyone. In today's video we're going to talk about Tesla braking, and how the car stops, how autopilot stops the car, and all that, and how it differs from a normal car. So what you see here is called the master cylinder. Um, this is the same that all cars have been using for probably the better part of a century now. Um, normally this this little white tank contains brake fluid and this is basically just a pump so when I press this there's a piston in here that basically takes this brake fluid and squirts it out and then at each of the wheels there's a thing called a slave cylinder which is the exact opposite of this basically it's a piston that's pushed out by that hydraulic fluid and then pushes the brake pads into the rotor stopping the car so normally in the car, basically, the brake pedal is connected here. And that's the simple explanation. There's a more complexity. Uh, for instance, there's two circuits, uh, one for front, one for rear, so that if you have one circuit fail, you can still stop the car. And the, the piston's kind of a dual, uh, dual stage in here, so one presses the other so that the brakes blend properly and all that. I'm not going to get into the weeds on that. There's plenty of resources to learn about the intricacies of brakes. But basically, cars have hydraulic brakes and have had for a long time. Um, it's a very proven system, and Teslas are no different. Even though you know most of your stopping may be done with regen, uh, which I'll get into at some point. Um, the braking system still has to be there for safety. So here's a simplified view. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. And this shows normally this would be connected to the brake pedal through uh, the booster, and I'll get into that in a minute. And then there's the pistons. Uh, the reservoir here forces the fluid down the brake line into the slave cylinder, um, which pushes these piston pushes this piston out and then pulls both the pads into the rotor. The rotor would be turning like this, so it's a cutaway view. And that's basically it. And the, the brake fluid is uh, a special fluid that can resist temperature. Um, all cars, again, like I said, all cars have this and have had it for a while. Now, what's a rather new innovation for probably, what, uh, 70 years now uh, is power brakes. Obviously, to make it easier to uh, press on this, they've, they've um, on internal combustion cars and some electric cars, they've come out with this thing, which uh, if you look under the hood of most internal combustion cars, you'll see this. Um, the master cylinder would be connected back here, and then inside the car, you know, this goes through the firewall. Inside the car, the brake pedal's pushed here. And this is called a vacuum brake booster. Um, there's a port here, which is connected to engine vacuum. And let me give you another diagram here. So this is kind of a simplified cutaway view, but showing the brake pedal here, the master cylinder here. And basically what's in here is a big diaphragm. And they're pulling engine vacuum on this side of the diaphragm. And then there's a, a basically a torque sensing device here, which is simply a spring and a plate. As you press the press this, the spring compresses and opens a port here, which lets air into the back side of the, the diaphragm. And air is like at sea levels about 14.7 pounds per square inch. So because there's no air, very little air on this side, and you're letting air in on this side, that causes the diaphragm to move and acts like a, an amplifier, basically. A little force on the brake pedal is translated to a lot of force on the master cylinder. And that's uh, really all that uh, has been in most internal combustion cars for a long time. Now the problem is you don't have vacuum on an EV. So like in Tesla's... Um, in the early Model S, up until about late 2014, they did use a conventional vacuum brake booster and then had an electric pump supplying the vacuum. And you could hear it every time you, you know, came to a stop, you'd hear this little motor running. But when they came out with autopilot, they needed a way to have the autopilot computer also do the braking. So they came up with 
this thing, um, the version they used in the earlier Model S was a little different than this, but uh, it's basically the same thing from the same company. This is called the Bosch iBooster. And it's an electromechanical brake booster. It has the same uh, master cylinder that you would use in the vacuum on the back. That's the reservoir. And then this goes through the firewall and it's connected to the brake pedal. Only it's an, using an electric motor. So let's take a look at that. So I've already taken this part and it, it fought me the whole way. <clears throat> so let's move this out of the way. So basically what we have here is this motor. This is the three phrase brushless motor. There's a circuit board in here that has um, six uh, MOSFETs that drive the three phase motor and then two uh, custom controllers that have Bosch numbers on them. Uh, I don't know exactly what they are. There's some power supply stuff in here and that's basically it. Um, that's all the electronics do. <clears throat> the motor, three phase motor, turns this gear And that would normally be attached right here. So that gear spins this. And as it spins, you can see there's a kind of like an Acme screw mechanism that pushes this up. So normally, this was in here with a big ass spring. <clears throat> and that helps basically return the motor back to zero when, when the motor isn't being used and the spring spring back drives it. Now, how do they know how to run the motor? So, and keep in mind, this is fully fault tolerant. If something fails, the motor doesn't work or see even if it seizes up, you can still press. So again, this is pressing basically on the master cylinder here. There's a, you know, basically like an overrunning clutch. It's just a gear that meshes with this gear and it, you're, you can press this and still activate the master cylinder manually. And when you do, there's a spring in here. See that little thing? How it pops out when I put a lot of force on it. So this is basically sensing how hard you're pressing. <clears throat> on the end of this mechanism is a magnet. I don't know if you can uh, tell, but yeah, it sticks to that spring. And then... Inside the cover, this was mounted on this and has a Hall Effect sensor. A Hall Effect sensor is a magnetic, for, a solid state magnetic force sensor, or yeah, basically it's just sensing where that magnet is. So as it is, as it rises up, the magnetic field increases and it's sent to this ribbon. And then there's an electrical connector, which uh, transfers the signals over to the circuit board. So this is the outer cover. So basically, as you would put torque on this and the master cylinder would start fighting you, you would activate the torque sensor, which would press that out. The ECU would sense it and then spin the motor, thus helping you press. And then when you take your foot off, the spring would push it all back. Now the cool thing about this is not only is it all electric, but the ECU can be commanded by the autopilot or automatic emergency braking to apply the brakes even without you touching the pedal. So that enabled the autopilot ECU to stop the car both when driving with autopilot and uh, like an automatic emergency braking. And again, this um, master cylinder basically would mount here and then this spring and this push rod, so we can get that out. This little thing would press in here and this just takes the side load off, it's a little swivel, and allows it to press the master cylinder in. That's basically it. Um, th this is now, you're starting to see the iBooster type technology in almost all cars because they have driver assistance systems and they need some way for the driver assistance stuff to stop the car. And uh, that's about it. That's all we have for the brake booster. Um, if you want to know how hydraulic braking system 
its work. It's uh, really easy to search online, find out. Uh, there isn't really, the only other electrical components here is in the uh, master cylinder reservoir, there's a float switch that detects when you're low on brake fluid, but that's pretty much it in the way of electronics. You know, I suspect that in the ECU, you know, there's two processors here, probably because one is cross-checking the other for safety. They want to make sure that this doesn't fail and like slam on the brakes or um, fail to work, especially since this is being used in a safety critical application. Uh, they, they want to make sure it's very robust. So this probably has a lot of development in it and it'll probably be, be one of the later things if Tesla ever takes it, you know, in-house. Um, they're assuming the liability, so probably be a while before Tesla builds their own iBooster. If you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments below, and also have a link in the description uh, if you'd like to support the channel. I would appreciate it. And also, if you like the video, uh, give me a thumbs up, and I'd appreciate a subscription if you want to see more teardown videos. Um, I think I'm going to do one on how three-phase motors work and how regen braking works. Um, a lot of people are going to see this three-phase motor and wonder how this works. Um, so I'll, I'll give a demonstration in the next video. That's all I have. Thanks for watching.